we all know sad facts where investigators and prosecutors even don't get it right. But one reason for that, I think, is that sometimes we fall in love with our own theories. We start with a hypothesis, of course, the only place we can start, but when an investigator falls in love and deeply in love with a hypothesis, then the hypothesis can end up overriding the facts. Confirmation bias is not just in the forum of investigation, of course. We know it's human, but we've got to guard against it. For our work, the truth has to be our lodestar. And at every stage in crafting every investigative step, we've got to be guided by the facts and not theories. We can't disregard the ones that inconveniently undermine our theories. And we can't dig only for those that make our case. We owe it to our profession and to the criminal justice system and to our colleagues and the many teammates who either taught us, may long, no longer be living, or are right next to us in our teams today. We owe that because, as we know, justice isn't just done when we convict the guilty. It's also done when we exonerate the innocent. And this takes intellectual discipline and integrity. And we've got to be humble enough to know that our initial theory may end up being wrong, either in part or sometimes even in whole. The hypothesis is where we start, but it's the facts where we end up. When we find inconvenient facts, it's our obligation to change our hypothesis. Someone we thought was a target may now be a witness. Someone who started as a witness may in fact be a prosecutor. Uh, um, sorry. <laughs> may <in fact. laughs> never. We never want that. <laughs> may become a target. And what we believed was, dishon was a dishonest conduct, in fact, may end up having a perfectly legitimate explanation. It's up to us to be open to all that. So the three rules really fit together. We've got to be clear in our planning. We've got to listen to the answers. And then we've got to adjust our hypothesis to meet our facts. And repeat, and repeat, and repeat until at the end of the day, we end up with cold, hard facts that can be corroborated, that are reliable. And then we're in a position where we can make the difficult decisions that will follow on the heels of a good fraud investigation.